Hello, this is Dr. Alemi from George Mason University, and I'd like to talk to you about how to organize a decision tree and display components of a decision within a decision tree. Coming up, I show you how to construct a decision tree and what are the various components of a tree. And I will give you some pointers about how to interview decision makers. There are three broad components of a decision that are displayed in the decision tree. The first component is the decision itself. This is displayed as a square node with two or more arcs coming out and pointing out the options. The second component is this, a series of sequence of the events that follow the decision. These are displayed as a circle node with arcs pointing out the occurrence of the event. Typically, on these circle nodes, we display the probabilities of each one of the events occurring. The last component displayed on a decision tree are the consequences. These are displayed as either utilities or costs associated with different pathways in the decision tree. This uh, slide shows the components of a decision tree. You see here a decision node, a square node with two arcs going out of it to alternative options. One is continue as is and the other one is the alternative option. This slide shows a series of events. The event node is shown with a circle and each one of the arcs point to either the event occurring or not occurring. Here you see another event following the original event displayed before. Again, the event node is shown with a circle no and the arcs point to the event occurring or not occurring. The last component of a decision tree is displayed on the right side of the tree and is the consequences, typically either the utilities associated with the pathway or the costs associated with the pathway. Let's take an example. A preferred provider organization has approached the benefit manager of a company of 992 employees and a PPO is offering to discount the hospitalization services by 6% and outpatient services by 15% if the company would remove co-payments for employees utilizing the PPO. Your task is to understand what would be the cost savings under these new arrangements. First, we display the, de the decision. The decision is to join the PPO or to continue as is. Next, we display the events that may follow. The patient, the employee, might have a clinic visit or might have a hospitalization. Here we are showing with the probability of P1 after joining the PPO there will be a clinic visit and the probability of P2 after a clinic visit and after joining the PPO there will be hospitalization. As you can see the events are shown both under the alternative option as well as under continuing as is. Last, we point out the consequences. Here we show that the pathway of joining the PPO, having a clinic visit, and having hospitalization has the total cost equivalent to C1. We show that joining the PPO, having no clinic visits, but having no hospitalization, has a total cost of zero. These costs are displayed for all of the pathways in the decision tree. In constructing a decision tree, the analysis process matters. It informs the decision is looming and helps the decision maker get ready. It reassures that the analysis is fair. It removes decision makers from day-to-day -day concerns so that they can start focusing on the decision being analyzed. And it provides new insights while facilitating the discussion around the decision. The process that i like you to follow in constructing a decision tree is the following. First, interview the decision makers and construct a preliminary tree. Present this tree and show how various concerns are captured in this tree, but be ready to revise it and in fact actively solicit a list of new concerns 
and revise the tree. Let's go back to our example and see how the original decision tree was revised after we presented it to the employer. They had several concerns. First, they wanted to separate general outpatient care from mental health care. Second, they wanted to focus on employees who file claims and not who, employees who do not meet the deductible. They were also concerned that the PPO clinic might have less efficient practices. They thought that maybe lower copayment may lead to overutilization and that group practices are more efficient than solo practices and that clinicians may generate their own demand and they also wanted to make sure that our analysis showed the, dis the discounts being applied. Let's look at how the concerns of the employers led to revisions of the decision tree. In this slide, we have introduced a new event called meeting the deductible. We also show hospitalization occurring at a probability of P2 for joining the PPO, an outpatient visit occurring with the probability of P3. Outpatient visit is also broken down in terms of clinic visits and mental health visits. We also show that if people who have less than the deductible claims have zero cost to the employer. 